To show you the far city of Tokyo, it's also a city easy to get lost. So I made some ideas of itinerary, how you can spend the first five days. Please share if you have your best five days plan in Tokyo. When you arrive Tokyo, let's get to somewhere you feel the Tokyo the most. Let's go to Shibuya's Scrambles Crossing and dive into the crowd of Tokyo. You have no idea where you are now. You might wonder what Tokyo other parts are like, but enjoy the feeling that you came to the far east island of Japan. Drop by convenience stores such as Samidebu, Lawson, Family Mart, and get some snacks for late night or next morning. Your journey has just started, so it's also a good idea to take it easy and take a rest at the hotel. Jet lag can be out of your control, so you might want to take it easy and be ready for the rest of your travel. For this itinerary, I set the sample hotel from where I actually have stayed before. Let's do setting that you are staying at the Blossom Hibiya in Shinbashi. It's a premier business hotel that you have a great view of Tokyo, but this is just example, so you have plenty of choices area and grade from Park Hyatt to Capsule Hotels. And now the first full day of Tokyo starts. Some of you might arrive late night, so let's set this day as day one. Next morning, let's eat breakfast in your hotel, or if you are on budget, get breakfast at a convenience store. You can also find a coffee shop or a beef ball shop that you can find breakfast under five dollars. Today, let's complete the major spots in the east side of Tokyo city center. Let's go to Akihabara first. For the train, Prepare IC card, Suica or Pasmo. If you take subways often, you can also consider getting the subway pass. Let's start from Akihabara. Akihabara is a town many Japanese modern interesting culture gathers, from anime, games, figures, electronics parts, and also a maid cafe and character themed cafe. Most of the stores are open by 11 a.m., so let's arrive there before noon. Before starting exploring, let's eat some ramen for lunch. There are many different kinds of ramen, but popular ramen is tonkotsu ramen with mild pork soup. Let's go to this Kyushu Jangara ramen. If you like to save more, you can also consider this Fukunoken in front of the station. After ramen, you can stroll around the major spots of Akihabara, such as Radio Kaikan, Gachapon Center, Tamashi Nation stores. If you are not much into anime or games, just taking a look at electronics shops or camera shops would be also fun. Around 2 p.m., let's take Yamanote Line or Keihin Tohoku Line to Ueno. Make sure you get off at Koenguchi, which means park exit, that are directly connected to the Ueno Park. First, let's go to the Tokyo National Museum. Tokyo National Museum is the biggest museum in Japan that you can see traditional Japanese statue, sword, paintings, and you can get the glimpse of Japanese culture. The museum's final entry time is 4.30 p.m. So if the museum is important for you, you might want to finish Akihabara area and come to Ueno. After the museum, let's go to Ueno Toshogu to see the shrine and the pagoda that were built in 1639 here and Shinobazu Lake. Let's spend a nice late afternoon time here. And now let's go down the busy Amiyoko street that you can see sort of chaotic busy street with lots of shops. Now let's take Ginza line from Ueno Hirokoji station to Asakusa. In front of the Kaminarimon gate, there is a small observatory. So let's take a look at the breathtaking view of Sensoji Temple and Sky Tree across the river. This is the opposite side of Tokyo from Shibuya that you were there yesterday. Now let's head to Sensoji Temple. You will go through Nakamise Street with lots of souvenir shops, and you see numerous streets with different styles. Each has souvenir shops and places to eat. You'll be probably tired by now, so let's eat meat. There is a traditional sukiyaki restaurant like Asakusa Imahan. If you are on budget, you can also try Kyukatsu or Tonkatsu. After dinner, let's stroll around Sensoji Temple. It's much less people compared with the daytime. The only con is, all souvenir shops are closed. 
but don't worry because I have the last day saved for the shopping. So you can come back here later, or if you cannot come back, you can come here earlier in the day. The view of Asakusa at night is amazing. It's a beautiful architectural Buddhism temple and the Tokyo sky tree that are lit up in different colors. Now let's head to the Sumino River. You'll see the open view on the east side of Tokyo. Sumida River Walk is a little bridge for pedestrians, and it continues to Tokyo Mizumachi. There is a little walk path along the canal overlooking the Tokyo Sky Tree. On the second day, let's master the west side of Tokyo city center today. The first place we go is the Serene Meiji Shrine. Religious aspect of Japan mainly formed with Shinto and Buddhism, and the main shrine is a major symbol of Shinto shrine in Tokyo. The shrine is located right next to Harajuku Station, and you can also use Meiji Jingu Mai Station too. Mai means in front in Japanese. The shrine gate is open from the time of the sunrise to sunset, so it changes depending on the month. Let's enjoy the nice morning air in the forest in the middle of Tokyo. The temperature feels much cooler in the forest, and it can be cold from autumn to spring. You might want to have an outer wear that you can put on and off depends on the time of the day. For lunch, let's go to Kurazushi, a reasonable sushi chain restaurant. This restaurant is very popular, so I recommend you to go around 11 a.m. and wait. Once you sit down, it has a spacious blue seat so it's a good choice for family or group too. If you cannot forget the ramen taste from previous day, you can have it here too in Harajuku. If you need a vegan choice, you can have vegan ramen on the second floor. It tastes very good too. After the lunch, let's stroll the Harajuku area. Harajuku is a town popular among young Japanese students, but now it's a popular place for tourists too. So you see lots of souvenir shops. The popular snack here is the crepe. So let's grab one and eat. Make sure you order one with ice cream in it. This is just my favorite. Also, there are lots of people on the Takeshita street, so be careful not to put your crepe on someone's face accidentally. Around the sunset time, let's go to one of the observatories in Tokyo. The four major observatories are Tokyo Tower, Tokyo Sky Tree, Shibuya Sky, and Tokyo City View in Tokyo. Among them, Shibuya Sky and Tokyo City View has outdoor deck that you can feel the air on the rooftop of the skyscraper, which is a better environment for your photo, and also to feel the Tokyo sky without glasses in between. These outdoor facilities might close depending on the weather and other conditions, so please make sure to check the website before you visit. If you're on budget, you can also go to Tokyo Metropolitan Government Building in Shinjuku. You will see amazing view of Tokyo and free admission. After the dark, let's go to Shinjuku. Kabukicho is another night town that big Godzilla figures are looking down the street. There are many shops, bars, and movie theaters. It's a little bit touristy and not the cleanest place in Tokyo, but it might be fun to check out quickly. Make sure you don't follow anyone saying that they guide you to restaurants. Omoide Yokocho is a little alley by the train rails that you can find small dining places. It's a nice place to look around something to eat. Any of these izakaya gives you a little plate called otoshi, even if you don't ask. So please note that this is part of the Japanese culture that are like table charge. Usually it's under 500 yen or so. Since the distance between people are very close, each shop might have different rules like time limit to stay or no perfume. Day 3. You might be a little bit tired by now, so let's take it easy this day. But I know you feel uncomfortable to stay in the hotel all day, so let's hit one or two of the tourist spots like temples and garden. I have two ideas. One is going to the east side of Tokyo, Kiyosumi Shirakawa and Monzen Nakacho. 
Kiyosumi Garden near Kiyosumi Shirakawa Station is a garden that you can see all the different rocks collected from different parts of Japan. Fukagawa Shiryokan Museum is a little museum that you can see the lifestyle of Edo period around this area. There is a special meal that you can eat only in this area of Tokyo, that is a Fukagawa bowl with crumbs. If you like crumbs, it's an interesting food to try. Kiyosumi Shiraka also has a modern art museum of Tokyo. It's not as busy as other areas of Tokyo, so you can enjoy a nice stroll. Another idea is going to Ghibli Museum in Mitaka. Ghibli Museum is located in the west side of Tokyo, so on this route, you can also try Gotokuji Temple, that is known for the cat figures called Maneki Neko, that invite fortune to you. You can purchase yours and put there, also you can bring home with you. If you are tired from the day one and two, I think it's also a great idea just to stay in a hotel and only walk around your hotel. Prepare, save energy for the next day, because day four is a day trip day. As you are in Tokyo for three days, it might be the time to stay away from the crowd today. It's a great idea to make a day trip to outside Tokyo. For day trips, you can choose your favorite destination balancing with other parts of your itinerary. Some day trip destinations that you can visit easily is the Kamakura, Mount Takao, Kawagoe. The destination you need some preparation and have to leave early in the morning is Kawaguchiko to see Mount Fuji, Hakone, and Nikko. Depends on how many day trips you make, the length of your stay in Tokyo changes. But considering the time it takes and what you can see, let's go to Kaguchiko to see Mount Fuji. The easiest way to get to Kaguchiko is either taking highway bus from Shinjuku or taking JR's Fuji Excursion Limited Express from Shinjuku. You can purchase a ticket at the machine too, but long distance buses can be full soon. So I recommend you to book online. But I also understand you want to go to see Mount Fuji on the sunny days and avoid going to not to see Mount Fuji in obviously rainy days. In that case, I recommend you to make reservation after you find out the weather a few days before. If you do several day trips, you may be able to get JR Tokyo Wild Pass. You can get on the limited express to Kaguchiko without any extra charge. With JR Tokyo Wild Pass, you can also get on the Limited Express to Nikko from Shinjuku. Odoriko to Atami and Izu Peninsula, Shinkansen to Karuizawa, and Yuzawa in Niigata Prefecture. It's 15,000 yen for three days to get the highway bus from Shinjuku. It's important to come out to the new south exit because it's right under the bus terminal. You can access from Shinbashi to Shinjuku by Tokyo Metro too, but it takes you to far away in Shinjuku Station that you end up walking a lot outside. So when you use Google Map, what you might want to do is to put the exact location. For example, from Shinbashi Station, if you set Shinjuku as destination, the route of Marunochi Line comes up, which you have to walk far away in Shinjuku. But if you set Shinjuku Bus Terminal as destination, this Chuo Line route comes up and it tells you to get on car number one, which is the closest car to the escalator to the bus terminal. And taking the right car from the original station makes a big difference in a station like this Shinjuku, the busiest station in the world, especially if you have luggage. If you are uncomfortable to arrange trains and routes, or worry about navigating yourself in the country, there is a language barrier, you can also take day tours Major Japanese travel agencies such as JTB, HIS, and Hatobasu is running a day tour in English inside Tokyo and surrounding areas of Tokyo, so you might want to check their website too. If you are going other parts of Japan and coming back to Tokyo later, you might want to keep this day the last day. It's a shopping day. Today, let's go to Ginza. Many people underestimate Ginza or judge Ginza because of the signs of brand shops. But there are so much more in Ginza area. The shops you don't want to miss is antenna shops. Antenna shops are the 
official shops of the prefectures in Japan, and you can get their local products without marked up prices. This is the best spot to see local art crafts and condiments. Kotsu Kaikan, in front of Yurakucho Station, has Hokkaido shops called Dosanko Plaza, and you can also see Okinawa shops. If you are looking for sake, Kochi shop has a wide selection of sake from Kochi prefecture. So it might be fun to look around different regions and find their original local sake. If you are looking for shochu liquor, let's go to Kagoshima shops. If you look for more regular snacks or foods Japanese people get regularly, you can go to OK store in Ginza that newly opens. It's a discount supermarket. Usually located in the suburbs, if you are looking for some clothes, you can check Uniqlo and Mujirushi, which is a reasonable Japanese brand that you might see in your country too. For this building of Uniqlo in Ginza, you can also see Daiso, a 100 yen shop. For more variety of goods, you might want to go back to Akihabara, and for more souvenirs for travel, you might want to go back to Asakusa's Nakamise Street during daytime. Now your suitcase is full. So that was just an idea of a five days itinerary in Tokyo. You can adjust with your favor and also your physical conditions. Because obviously I put a lot in these five days. Please share what kind of five days trip you like to spend or anything I missed. Have a great trip to Tokyo. Have a great week until the next video.